sound off for Chesterfield. Chesterfield, low in nicotine, highest in quality, best for you. Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to auto theft detail. You get a call from the owner of a used car lot. He tells you he thinks he bought a stolen car. Your job, check it out. Smokers by the thousands are now changing to Chesterfield, the only cigarette ever to give you one, proof of low nicotine, highest quality. Two, this proven record with smokers. No adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfield. Chesterfield, regular or king size, low in nicotine, highest in quality, best for you. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, May 4th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of auto theft detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Nelson. My name's Friday. I was on my way into the office, and it was 7.56 a.m. when I got to room 40. Auto theft. Is that you, Joe? Yeah. Hi. When would you get in? Well, about 7.30. I woke up at 5. I couldn't get back to sleep. What's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I don't think I could lift a pencil to make out a report today. Is that right? What happened? Baseball. Baseball? Yeah. I tell you something, Joe. I found it out yesterday. Ain't no Chuck Stevens. Is that right? Yep. Yesterday morning, I got up early. I'm going to do a little work in the garden. It was a beautiful day, you know. Felt real great. Uh-huh. I got out in the backyard. I'm going to take it easy, listen to the ball game, you know. Easy day. Yeah. And about 10, that guy next door, Neil Radcliffe, came over. That's the fellow of the fire department, isn't it? No, Joe. That's Bud Hendricks in the fire department. Neil works for an insurance oh, company. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Neil's company is going to sponsor a team in the Little League. You know, kids' baseball team. Mm-hmm. I think I read something about that in the papers, didn't I? Yeah, I suppose you did. They're pretty good, too. Mm-hmm. Well, Neil's got sort of a tryout yesterday, lined up for his team practice, you know. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to umpire. Do you know anything about being an umpire? Well, Joe, sure I do. And besides, Neil figures, since I'm a policeman, the kids will believe me. He had a little trouble with them himself last week. I just thought you had to go to some sort of a school to be an umpire. Well, Joe, you do for the regular leagues, but this was just a practice game. Neil's team and some kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. So I told him, sure, I'd do it. I changed my clothes, went out to the park with him. You know, I thought it might be good public relations for the police department. You know what they tell us. Being an umpire would be good public relations, huh? Well, Joe, the bulletins say get out, get around the neighborhood, know your friends and their kids. All right, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Show those kids are on the wrong league. What do you mean? They're murderers. Well, how's that? The way they play the game, baseball. I never saw such ball. Is that a fact? Yeah, I figured, you know, softball, underhands, kids pitching, be easy to call. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's regulation hardball. Just like that. Bases are a little closer, but it's just like the big leagues and the way those kids throw the ball. A couple of times there, I thought they were just kidding. I'd hear this thump, never see the ball. Thought the kid catcher was just hitting his hand, his glove, you know. And all of a sudden, he'd turn around, and there it'd be right in his mitt. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you get so sore if you just umpired the game? You stood in one place, didn't you? While I was up in the game, yeah, but this team of Neal's was skunking the other kids so bad that we had a little reorganization. What do you mean, reorganization? Well, the uh, end of the second inning, the score was 14-2, to two, and I thought that was a little unfair to the neighborhood kids. Being the umpire, you certainly had the right to think it was unfair. Too. Well, I got out and I told them what I thought, so I decided to play first base for him. You what? I played first base for him. With all those kids? Sure. Fun. I oh. played five straight innings. That's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah. Finally, I had to quit. Could hardly move. Didn't seem to make any difference where I was, Joe. Those kids weren't there. They just ran me ragged. Yeah, well, maybe you better take it a little easy today, huh? Would you like the day off? No, not the day off, Joe, but, you know, I'll take it easy. 
<laughs> Faye rubbed liniment on my back all night. All over my arms and legs. Man, I'm sore. It even hurt to get dressed this morning. Mm-hmm. Well, what was the final score, anyway? Well, at the end of the second inning, it was 14 to 2 in favor of the Little Saints. You like told I was me telling all you, that. That's Neil's team. 14 to 2. You got in the game and played. What did it end up with? You know, I didn't even get one hit. You didn't? No. <laughs> Three times the bat didn't even get a hit. Yeah, well, that's too bad. What was the final score of the game? Did you hear me? Hmm? The final score of the game? Oh. Not the original score, but after you played five innings, what was the score of the total? I was just curious to know you. Yeah. 46 to 12. When I left. Mm-hmm. That was at the end of the seventh. The little mm-hmm. saints were up when I left. That was the other team's favor. Mm-hmm. The team you weren't playing on. Joe, don't rub it in. The other team had run through their batting lineup twice. The way they were going, I think they were going to have to call the game on account of darkness. They'd been up for over an hour. Only one out. <laughs> they sound pretty good. Well, they may sound pretty good to you, but they're murderers. You know, Joe, those kids grew up. There isn't going to be a ball club in the country that's going to have a chance against them. I never saw anything like it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I missed being there to see you play. Yeah, I bet you are. It was pretty bad, Joe, really. Well, you'd never know it. <laughs> Had me marked down for ten errors when I left. Only ten? It wasn't five innings. Mm-hmm. I guess you got to be pretty bad to run up a score like that. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I was, Joe, though. I was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. I get it. Auto theft Friday. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Sure, we'll be right out. Want to give me that name again, please? Uh-huh, and that address. Fine. No, right away. Yes, sir. Friday. That's right. Right, bye. What do you got? Well, I don't think you're going to get much rest today. There's a used car dealer out on Washington Boulevard. Yeah? He thinks he bought a stolen car. a.m. We left the office and we drove out to the McGowan Car Company. It was a large lot on Washington Boulevard. Along the front of the place, there was a line of late model cars, each advertised as today's special. We walked through the aisles of automobiles to the office in a trailer at the back of the lot. There was nobody around, so we knocked on the door and waited. Well, he said he'd be here, didn't he? Yeah, I told him we'd be right out. Maybe he's gone out to breakfast. Yeah. Yeah? Mr. McGowan? That's right. Police officer, sir, you called our office. My name's Friday. Oh, yeah, come on in. Thank you. Come on back, just having a cup of coffee. Fix you guys up with one? No, sir, not for me. How about you? Yes, sir. Sure, I'll have a cup with you. Good, go on back and sit down. I'll bring it right back. Thank you. Say, uh, I didn't get you fellas' names. My name's Frank Smith. My partner, Sergeant Friday. Oh, glad to meet you. I talked to you on the phone, didn't I, Mr. Friday? Yes, sir, that's right. Thought so. Never forget a name, never do. There's your coffee. Thank you. I'm Jesse McGowan. Guys on the row are all the time kidding me about my first name. Jesse. Get it? No, sir, I don't believe I do. Jesse. Jesse James. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I want to tell you about what this guy came in Saturday night. Last Saturday? Yeah, you see, we stay open till 10 on Saturday night. This guy must have come in about 9. Jack went over to take care of him, but the fellow said he wanted to see the manager, so Jack brought him back here. I see. Said he had a car to sell, brand new Merc. Beautiful car. Say, I got a box of donuts here if you'd like one. No, thanks. I think I'll have one. Didn't get a chance to eat this morning. Got to worrying about this deal. Mm-hmm. Got some of these new kind with the cinnamon on top. Hmm. Sure good. Well, I uh, told this guy we'd like to buy the car, but we were kind of overstocked on Mercs. Yeah. He said he'd just come out from the east and bought the car when he got here. Said that right after he paid for it, he lost his job and had to get some money out of it. Uh-huh. I asked him if he'd like to make a trade, you know, a transportation car and money to boot. Offered him a good deal on a Nash Rambler. Just got a couple of 51s in. Yes, sir. He said he wanted to sell the car outright. Said he was going to leave town. He wanted to get his money out of the car. I asked him how much he wanted for it. Mm-hmm. He told me he'd have to let it go for 2200 bucks. It's about 800 under what he must have paid for it. Mm-hmm. Right away, I figured there was something wrong, so I had the mechanic look it over. Only had 3,200 miles on it. Hardly broke in. Beautiful. Radio, heater, white sidewalls, continental hookup, real beaut. Well, what'd your mechanic say about it? Said it was in perfect shape. So I asked the guy who the legal owner was. What'd he say? He said he was. He'd paid cash for it, had the pink slip made out to him all right. He had the identification to go with it. You bought the car then, did you? Yeah, sure looked like a good deal. I gave him a certified check made out to cash for the amount. He gave me the keys. That was the last I saw him. Well, aside from the fact that it's an unusual deal, why do you think there's something wrong with it? Well, for the first thing, the price he wanted for the car was too low. I had the feeling that if I'd have given him any trouble on it, he'd have come down on it. Do you have the pink slip here? Oh, yeah, I brought it with me this morning. I got it here in my wallet. Any other reason you think the deal might be phony? 
Well, it's hard to put it into words, Sergeant. Nothing I can point out to you. Just a feeling. You stay in this business very long, you kind of get to know people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Yeah, there's been a lot of gags about used car salesmen, about how we're always after somebody. Most of the time, though, it's the other way around. Is that right? Yeah, the bums were put out of the business right after the war. Public wouldn't stand for the way they did business. Got to rely on people coming back if you're going to come out in the long run. I guess it's like almost any other kind of business. Yeah, I suppose so. What kind of identification did the man have to prove he was this, uh, was it Lewis Carter? Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, Sergeant, I didn't ask for any. He had the pink slip. Price he was asking was right. We checked the block and body number. It was the one listed on the slip. No reason to believe he didn't own the car. How about it, Joe? Well, looks like it's one of the slips from DMV in San Diego. You mean there is something wrong? What if I use your phone, please? Sure, you bet. It's right there. Help yourself. Thank you. Can I dial a Michigan number on this? Yeah. All right. Two five zero seven, please. Yeah, auto theft. Mm-hmm. Hi, this is Joe Friday. Yeah. Say we got a pink slip out here. Looks like it's one of those that were stolen from DMV down south. No, down south, San Diego. Hmm. You got the list there? Yeah, I'll wait. You mean somebody stole a pink slip from the department? Yes, sir. As near as we can figure, it about two dozen of them. I never heard of that. Well, this is the first one of them. Hello. Yeah. All right. Made out to a Lewis Franklin Carter. No, no. C. C. Charlie, yeah. A. R. D. Dog, yeah. E. R. Carter, yeah. Mm-hmm. Registration number is uh, 660 dash. No, two sixes. 660 dash. Two more sixes. 667. 660 dash 667. That's right. Address 4287 Ingram Street, Los Angeles. LA 5. Engine number 585509. All right, I'm sorry. Five eight five five zero oh, nine two five. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mercury eight. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's what we figured. You got anything on the car? Mm-hmm. No, it was sold Saturday night. That's right. Yeah, there should be something out on it. Okay. Right. Thank you. How about it? The car stolen? No report yet, sir. I got to call the bank. Now, you said you gave the man a certified check. Yeah, I got to stop payment on it. Ain't going to be easy either. He can cash it any place. Sure looks like I'm out $2,200. Well, it isn't likely he's been able to cash it by this time, sir. Maybe not, but I'll give long odds that he's standing in line when the door's open. I better give him a call. Hope somebody's there. Well, it's just 8.25. Yeah. Probably a little early. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sound like anybody's there yet. Well, keep trying. I got to get that check. See what I mean? What's that? About the jokes. Uh, we're the ones always trying to get away with a fast deal. No such thing. Take this one, for instance. Yeah? I bought the car in good faith. Paid cash for it. Gave the guy just what he asked for. Well, not quite, sir. Huh? we get a little more than that. <laughs> We got a complete description of the suspect, Lewis Carter. We put out a local and an APB on him, and then we asked Dean Bergman to come out and go over the car for fingerprints. The owner of the used car lot, Jesse McGowan, told us that the car had been washed and cleaned thoroughly, but he didn't think we'd be able to come up with any fingerprints. 9 a.m., we put in a call to the bank and asked them to stop payment on the check and to notify their branch offices to do the same. McGowan supplied the number of the check, and the information was gotten out to the other banks and check cashing agencies in the area. Bergman finished checking the car, and he told us that the only print that he'd been able to find was a partial thumbprint under the dashboard. We rolled the prints of the man who'd washed the car, along with those of McGowan and the other people on the lot who'd come in contact with the automobile. None of theirs matched. We checked with the office and told them that we'd check out the address listed on the pink slip. 9.37 a.m., we pulled up in front of 4287 Ingram Street. It was a large two-story place that had been converted into a rooming house. There were several cars parked in the front yard. We went up to the front door and rang the bell. Want to try it again? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there were any of those around anymore. Don't see many of them nowadays. What? What kind of doorbell? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I'd like to see Lewis Carter. I'm him. What do you want? Police officers. We'd like to talk to you. Cops? What do you want with me? Might be better if we talked inside. Huh? Inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on in. I just got up. One of you guys got a cigarette? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, how about a match? 
Here. Thanks. Well, what do you want to see me about? Something wrong? You own a 53 Mercury convertible? Yeah, why? You know where it is? It should be out in front. Why? You leave the keys in your car when you park it? Once in a while I forget it, yeah. Look, I don't know if it's there now, though. Your car's been stolen, Mr. Carter. Huh? Your car's been stolen. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, you're right. Well, where is it? Yeah, you got it back for me? Is it in the police garage? No, sir, I'm afraid it's not that easy. It was sold Saturday night. Sold? Who to? A used car dealer out in Washington. Who owns the car, sir? Well, I do. Do you have the pink slip on it? No, I didn't get it back from the Department of Motor Vehicles yet. Why? Well, the man that sold the car had the pink slip with him. Well, I don't care if he did have it. The car doesn't belong to him. He had no right to sell it. When's the last time you saw your car? Mm, I guess it was Saturday afternoon. I came home early. I parked it out in front. Yeah, Saturday afternoon. Uh -huh. How is it you didn't know the car was taken? Officer, you saw the front of this place. There must be half a dozen cars parked out there. The rumors, they use the yard. You didn't use the car over the weekend then, is that it? Well, no, I didn't. I got home Saturday afternoon, like I told you. I spent the whole weekend doing some painting in one of the upstairs rooms. It's been vacant a long time. I figured maybe if I put a little paint on it, I might be able to rent it. Mm hmm You see, my wife used to take care of the place. She and I had some trouble. She went back east to see her mother. Seems like the house went to pot after she left, and we're really going to have trouble when she comes back and sees this mess. How many people do you have living here? Uh, uh, nine. Mm hmm I'd like to have you take a look at this description and see if any of them fit it. You figure it might be one of them? Well, we'd like you to check the description, if you would. Okay. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it isn't one of them. None of them match this. What if you can give us their names? Oh, sure I can. Well, why do you have to have them? Just routine. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I can give them to you, but I'm sure they aren't mixed up in it. Yes, yeah, sir. The thing I can't figure is how he got the pink slip. It was stolen, sir. From the state? Yes, sir. Last month, someone broke into their offices in San Diego and stole two dozen registration slips. How much did you get for the car? $2,200. Twenty-two hundred. Thing cost me over three thousand. Guy must be a jerk, huh? I don't know. It didn't cost him anything. Ten fifteen a.m. We went by the used car lot and picked up the owner. We took him down to the city hall and had him check the mug books. After going through the pictures, he was unable to give us an identification of the man who'd sold him the stolen automobile. We checked the names of the people who lived at Lewis Carter's house. One of them had a record of arrest on charges of violation of Section 4127A of the Los Angeles Municipal Code. He'd served a short term in the city jail, and then he'd been released. His physical description, however, did not match that of the suspect we were looking for. 11.35 a.m. We had the used car dealer taken back to his lot, and Frank and I checked into the office. About the only thing we got working for us is the check. Yeah, hope they get the word out in time. He gets his hands on that money, and he can go a long way. I get it. Auto theft, Friday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we did. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Be there as soon as we can make it. Right. Bye. Well, he isn't going far. What do you mean? He's at the bank now. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. At Cigarette Dealers... In vending machines. At supermarkets and stores, coast to coast. Chesterfields, please. Smokers by the thousands. Yes, smokers by the thousands are now changing to Chesterfield. The only cigarette ever to give you one proof of low nicotine, highest quality. Chemical analyses of the country's six leading brands confirm that. Two. The only cigarette ever to give you this proven record with smokers. Again and again, over a full year and one half, a group of Chesterfield smokers have been given thorough medical examinations. The doctor's reports are a matter of record. No adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfield. A responsible independent research laboratory supervises this continuing program. Chesterfield. The only cigarette ever with a record like this. Chesterfield. Best for you. We'd gotten a call from a branch office of the bank that the check had been drawn on. At 11.30 a.m. that morning, a man had walked into the bank and presented a check for the amount of $2,200 drawn on the account of Jesse McGowan. Because of the amount of the check, it had to be okayed by the head cashier. 
Fortunately, he'd gotten the information about the check and had stalled the suspect long enough to call us. He was able to keep him waiting until we got there. The man was taken into custody without any trouble. He denied having anything to do with the stolen car, and he said that we'd made a mistake. We took him downtown and started to question him. I tell you, I don't know what this is all about. I'd like to help you out, but there's nothing I can do. Frank? Yeah? You want to get in touch with McGowan and have him come over? Yeah, right away. Well, do you want to tell me again where you got that check? It was against the law to have a check. I'd like to know where you got this one. I want it. Where? Look, I don't know what this is all about. I'm not about to get any of my friends in trouble by naming them. I got nothing to do with this, let alone my pals. You'll save yourself a lot more trouble if you'll tell us where you got the check. All right, I won it in a poker game. Pretty high stakes. Yeah, we gave up kid games. Who'd you win it from? I told you I wasn't going to name any names. We're going to get them sooner or later, you know that. Not for me, you aren't. You build it any way you want. That's the way I figure it. When was this poker game? Saturday night. Where? I'm sorry, there's another one I can't answer. You been in San Diego lately? Not for a couple of months. When's the last time you were down there? I don't remember right off. It'll help if you can. What do you mean, help me? I got no trouble. You guys make a pinch while I'm trying to cash a check. I won the money. It was a payment for a debt. All I was trying to do is get my money. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. Why don't you tell us who you won the money from? And have you guys throw a beef at them? Nothing doing. I read where you fellas spend your time breaking up a game of old maid. It's a little more serious than that, isn't it? Well, maybe to you. I got no problem. All I got to do is sit tight. You keep believing that, mister. You keep acting like this, and you'll see what a problem you really got here. McGowan's on his way over, Joe. Who's McGowan? He's the man who wrote the check you tried to cash. Waste of time. You don't know me. We'll let him decide that. Go ahead. Have your fun. A couple of questions we'd like to ask you. Go ahead. I got nothing more important to do. Check your name through our identification bureau. Came up with some mighty interesting things. Is that right? Yeah. Let me see, Frank. Here. True name, Harold Drake. Is that right? Yeah. Your address is listed as 2917 Ledgewood Drive. Is that right? Yep. You told us you'd never been arrested. I haven't. Let's take a look at a picture. You got the room rigged for moving. I'm going to tell you something, Drake. You mark it down, you remember it. The sooner you stop playing footsie with us, the better it's going to be for you. You understand? When do you bring out the rubber hose? That went out with the story you're trying to hand us. Here's the picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy looks a lot like me. Didn't know any better. You might think we were twins. Yeah, if you didn't know better. But we do, huh? Oh, come off it, Drake, will you? We got you nailed and you know it. You want to sit there and dream up these fairy tales? That's up to you, but we got a job to do. We know you'll stand for this, and so do you. Now, why don't you save us both a lot of trouble and cop out? Look, I'd like to do it, Sergeant. No lie, I really would. But I can't cop out to something I had nothing to do with. All right. Start all over again. Where did you get the check? A guy gave it to me to pay off a poker debt. You're going to tell us who the guy is? No. I think it's time to stop playing games. Now, let's get on to what we got on the books here. You claim you've never been arrested. We got a package on you here that shows three arrests and two convictions. On a guy that looks like me. Let's go down the hall and roll your prints. That'll clean it up, won't I'm it? for that. Now, go on. Tell me the rest of the fairy tale. I'll lay it out for you in one-syllable words. That'll make it easy for you. You broke into the offices of DMV down in San Diego on February 28th. Yeah, day goes nice in February. Somebody's going to write a song about it sometime. You stole 26 pink slips, ready for mailing to the owners. <laughs> You must mean somebody else. Now, that smile's going to come off your face, Drake, when McGowan walks in Look, here. I don't know who Mr. McGowan is, but I'll be happy to meet him. Now, tell me, what did I do after I stole the pink slips? You got the address of Lewis Carter. Then you went to his home on Saturday night and you stole his car. You drove it down to McGowan's used car lot. And with a pink slip, you sold it to him for 2200 bucks. <laughs> I was busy that night, wasn't I? What are you trying to prove with all this talk, Drake? You trying to make it rough on yourself? Is that what you want? I'm not trying to do anything. All I'm doing is trying to go along with you guys. I'll check and see if McGowan's here. All right. Can I have one of those? Yeah, help yourself. Thanks. You know, I wouldn't have your job for all the money in the world. All right. Yeah, that's a lousy way to live. Going around trying to get people to cop out to things they didn't do. That's the way it looks to you, doesn't it? From anywhere I sit, it turns out just that way. A couple of things wrong. What? Your record, for one thing. If you can prove it's mine. All we got to do is walk down the hall and you've had it. As soon as we check the prints, we've turned the key. Sounds good the way you tell it. It's going to sound better the way the judge says it, isn't it? Who's writing for you? You were arrested in 1939 for auto theft. You served three years. Arrested in 1945, suspicion grand theft auto. Dismissed. Yeah, you see. They knew they had the wrong guy. Nobody's told us. Another arrest in 1946, grand theft auto. Served four years. Case of mistaken identity. Is that what happened both times? Some people got very bad eyes. Now, you take this fellow McGowan you're bringing in here. Wouldn't be at all surprised if he had bad eyes. You know, there's one way to get yourself out of this, and that's to tell us where you got that check. 
I don't know how to do it any more simple than I have, Sergeant. I want it playing poker, and I'm not going to tell you who I want it from. It wouldn't do any good. I don't know who's been giving you advice, mister, but you are playing it very smart. Really? The guy who dreamed up this routine probably spent the next 20 years at Q. As a matter of fact, he's still walking around. All right, mister, let's go down the hall and check your prints. Come on in, Mr. McGowan. Yeah, that's a man. You sure about that? Square to it in court. What are you trying to do? Cause me a lot of trouble? I haven't done anything, and you know it. Now you come in here and you say that's a man. You know what they can do to All me? All right, Drake, that's enough of that. Let's go, Mr. McGowan. Swear to it in court, that's the man who sold me the car. How about it, Drake? Nothing more, huh? Yeah, we'll roll your prints and check them against the record. I got a couple of parcels from San Diego. If yours match up, and I think they will, you've had it. No way out, huh? Not that I can see. Oh, what happens, uh... Now, this is just a wild question for the sake of argument. What happens if I cop out, plead guilty? We got nothing to say about that. You can't help out, huh? No, sir. Save the taxpayers a lot of money, no try. I told you we got nothing to say about that. Not much to gain then by copping out, huh? We got you made if you do or you don't. Maybe make it a little easier if there's no jury trial. That's up to the judge. Nothing you can do? It'll go into the book that way. Mm Mm-hmm. Got another cigarette? You're right there. Help yourself. Thanks. All right, let's go. Might as well get the prints and finish this thing up. Come on, Drake, get up. No hurry, let me finish the cigarette. I said, come on, we got other things to do. Well, so have I. What? One to ten years. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 15th, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. And now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Well, this is brief, but I think very much to the point. Chesterfield is the only cigarette that gives you proof of low nicotine, highest quality. That's what I want in my cigarette, and that's what you should look for in yours. Chesterfield, regular or king size, best for you. Triumph. Harold Alex Drake was tried and convicted of grand theft auto three counts and was sentenced as prescribed by law. Grand theft auto is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of from one to ten years. A hold was placed on the suspect by San Diego County for prosecution on the burglary charge. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Herb Vigran, Jack Crucian, Herb Ellis. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely new Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspaper for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Have you tried new cork-tipped Fatima? It's the smooth smoke. Here's why. New Fatima tips of perfect cork. King size for longer filtering. And Fatima quality for a much better flavor and aroma. Remember, Fatima has the tip for your lips. Try new Fatima. See how smooth it is. Fatima is made by the makers of Chesterfield, Liggett and Myers, one of tobacco's most respected names. Tonight, visit with Cousin Willie on NBC.